journey around data and cloud deeply involved in implementing B2B SaaS products for big data and business intelligence. Currently, working as product manager for the analytics squad at Kissflow. Always believe that holistic growth happens through deep knowledge sharing, being passionate about Microsoft Azure and low code. He has enthusiasm extends the beyond the confines of work to actively get involved in tech communities. He have played as technical product manager and growth hacker in the previous company. Now, let's welcome our technical giant, Mr. Dinesh Kumar sir, to give his presentation. Please, sir. Thanks for your kind introduction. And uh, let me share my screen. And uh, uh, just in audio check, is, yes, is my voice was audible? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir, audible. Uh, th thank you folks uh, who have uh, dedicated your time for for learning something new so it's not it's not an easy task that too in this uh, uh, re remote work kind of thing where most of us are at home uh, where we are coupled up with our personal work and uh, a lot of disturbances as well spending up a, a one hour of time is not an easy task and uh, I, i'm happy that we have uh, interesting candidates who are ready to learn new things so yeah let me kick start and this is me i'm dinesh kumar prabhakaran and once again i thank uh, hema and srm college for for having me here to share my knowledge and uh, this is a quick intro about me uh, i think uh, the, the faculties have already introduced about me so let's quickly jump into the agenda of today's talk so what I'll cover is uh, what, what, is data, what is data mining is all about and uh, why it is essential and what are the four different types of uh, uh, processes in data mining. Uh, by the way, data mining and data analytics are, uh, are, are uh, what to say, terminologies which meant to be almost same but has very minor difference. Okay. So uh, at times I might use analytics or at, at times I might use data mining, but whatever the concept I say, it, 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 it is based on data mining only, right? So just based, uh, depend on that. And after uh, talking about the types of, uh, types of analytics, and uh, I'll talk about the major roles that play in the industry, okay? And further, I, I'll just talk about how and uh, where analytics is being done. And I'll I'll give a walkthrough about ML.NET, and finally I'll uh, proceed with a demonstration of how an uh, analytics or data mining can be done even even uh, one person is not a, a, a fully proficient in code, how a person can do, right? So that's what my agenda is going to be. So I hope I hope most of you know what data mining is. So just a very simple explanation once again. So m mining, I hope all of you know about the general word mining. It's all about uh, digging up some, something and finding uh, finding uh, some useful thing, right? So that's that's all about the word mining in general. If we take mining in terms of uh, uh, in terms of gold mining, then there will be a set of people who would be digging up the earth. And uh, they'll be finding out that uh, go, go, gold mixed rocks, and they'll bring those rocks. They'll process that, and once again, uh, and finally, they'll uh, uh, they'll be able to uh, extract the pure gold out of those core uh, core rocks and all those things. Uh, and uh, e even we just saw this this kind of process in many movies as well, uh, from KGF movie. Uh, or many movies, so I don't want to go deep into that. Similarly, any business or any product has a lot of data, right? Uh, the, to take business to next level, it is essential that right decisions need to be taken. And to take the right decisions, the leaders, the, the stakeholders need right data 
to 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 an analyze around that to analyze the hypothesis they have and the uh, the data which has been produced and all those things and only then they'll uh, uh, take business decisions right so th that's what the industry is all about and and that too how fast we are moving towards this uh, uh, technology technology world and uh, and remote kind of world uh, you, you all know that right uh, so uh, more and more we are engaging with the electrical devices uh, the softwares and uh, we are spending our time uh, in, in those things than spending our time uh, directly right so let me give a very simple example of a business model that that has arised and uh, and turned successful right uh, let me tell us a very simple thing so before 10 years or 15 years if if uh, let me take myself as an example let's consider uh, let me uh, let's imagine that i am dinesh kumar i am coming to srm college to present this talk okay uh, I, I i'll be starting from my home which is in saukarpet so uh, before i start itself i'd be asking a couple of persons it's okay where is srm college uh, and uh, i'd be asking hema okay hema where is srm college which area to should i come so how should i come all those things uh, let's consider that i'm i'm going via bike while i'm going via bike itself once I reach uh, a specific uh, area, uh, the, the specific area where the college is located, I'll reach out to people who are there uh, and I'll ask their help. Okay, okay, which direction I should go? Oh, this direction, fine, okay. Uh, so so I, I'll, I was taking the help of people to reach out to a specific destination. That is the actual use case, right? This is, this is one thing. The same thing, just imagine now, what happens now? Uh, my, my, I know that my destination is SRM College and, and I'll directly take my phone, just type that SRM College and it will be showing me the route and I'll be uh, driving up my bike or car based on the route and uh, I'll directly land up with uh, into the college, right? So the software I'm actually using to solve my problem, right? To, to go to a destination uh, as quick as possible uh, that that's, that solves actually uh, my problem. But what happens in the behind, right? Google is providing the service for free. We all know that we don't pay any uh, uh, cash or uh, something uh, or amount to use the Google Apps my, uh, uh, app. But what happens behind? We sign up a terms and conditions to share our data with Google. And what are those, da those data? It's simply there. What direction, what exact point I am starting at, what time, what, what pathway I am taking, where is the destination I am going, and uh, uh, even it, it, it would be uh, it would be monitoring my data for the past six months or one year or whatever maybe when, when whenever I started Google Maps, and all these are data. Google Maps will be collecting all these data, and there will be separate team, right? So that team would be sitting uh, somewhere. They don't know who is who Dinesh is because it is uh, uh, it is of complaints. Uh, some some other person who is using the data should not know who the person is, right? So they uh, they they won't be any user information, but they know uh, they they'll be having all the data for the far past six months. What are all the play places I have visited? What are all the routes I have taken? And what are all the uh, stops? I had took in between how many minutes I have spent in the in those stops. Everything, everything it will be uh, the, the data will be having. So the that data science team or data analytics team, whatever it may be, they will mine the data. Okay, this particular user uh, almost resides in Chennai for the whole day for, for the whole year and takes this route frequently. And uh, based on his other Google search results. He seems to be a software uh, industry person, and some other information like uh, I, I may be added up my wife as co-account in my Google account. So based on that information, Google would be uh, uh, determining that I am a married person and I might have kids. So all these informations are mined out, right? So these are consider that these are simply ORS, uh, core core data. There, there is no insight uh, kind of thing. They'll, they'll just uh, 
dig up those data and keep it somewhere. And here comes Google Ads team, right? So uh, uh, while we are watching uh, 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 some website, we will be populated with some advertisements in the Google Chrome browser, right? So that's, those are being populated by the Google Ads team. What they'll do, they'll just uh, use those uh, partially uh, drilled out data and uh, whichever website I am seeing, they'll just populate uh, advertisement based on those data. For example, uh, from Saukarpe to, uh, let's say, Vadapalnya Ramapuram, uh, uh, I would have visited a McDonald's or uh, some KFC to have my uh, uh, a quick snack or something. Suddenly, I'll be getting an advertisement over, over here. Okay, this particular user is, uh, is in need of this thing at this time. Let's uh, show the ad to this particular uh, user or at this particular time. So this is the insight. Once uh, once I click that ad, Google gets the revenue, right? That, that is the uh, gold here, actually, for the Google. So it, 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 it looks like a very, very long process, but Google has set up this data mining platform very uh, beautifully. That's what uh, Google is getting the revenue on, uh, uh, to run their business and, and to even to scale their business all together okay so this is not a ending scenario also we are permanently using google we we are using we will use and our kids are also going to use so th that's what uh, uh, to explain data mining in a very realistic way uh, I, I just thought uh, to share this before i, I start with the technical portions uh, all together so and and if you have any questions just uh, unmute yourself and ask and also we'll uh, have a question session at the end also so yeah uh, the purpose of data mining of course businesses products are doing it for the purpose of operational insights okay operational insights are nothing but the business head is simply expecting a simple thing See, I have this hardware, uh, just uh, use that hardware as uh, much as possible, as long as possible, so that I can produce more goods, I can sell uh, those goods and get profit, right? So to maximize the usage of that hardware, what what need, uh, what need uh, that hardware should be, it, it need to be uh, working, it need to be in working condition for a long time without incurring into repairs, right? So let's take an example of uh, wind turbine mill. We would have saw this while we are uh, traveling somewhere uh, in the highways. That wind turbine mill is a very costly hardware, mm -hmm. right? So uh, just consider uh, uh, that wind turbine mill frequently gets repaired. Mm -hmm. In that case, how will the business owner will get the profit, right? He, he'll get things right. He'll get things that this investment is completely wasted. So along with that investment of buying the turbine mill, he'll also set up a uh, set up or or hire some people or outsource the job of maintaining that uh, turbine mill as well to some other person. That person, what he'll do is he'll continuously gather the data from turbine mill, and he'll predict is there any outrage is going to happen in the next two to two or three days. Then that service should be done, whether it is producing expected power. Uh, or not on all those things right so this is this is the uh, another business use case uh, which is uh, 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 which data mining is all about so uh, uh, there are three basic areas before analyze uh, analyze chart itself okay so it's not that uh, data is there okay let's start to analyze but, but the data should be uh, uh, incurred from somewhere, right? That's where uh, I was explaining this wind turbine mill example as well and Google Map example as well. Once mm -hmm. the, the, the product or the application has to be used and that application will be generating some say, data and behind the screen, there should be a, a strong pipeline set that should fetch all the data, that should do the all the cleansing activities and it should store the data uh, uh, in, in a little bit of meaningful manner in some database, okay? It's not that uh, a random data or uh, unstructured data kind of thing. It should be some some meaningful manner 
uh, in in a tabular format at least in uh, and it should it should be stored uh, uh, consistently for a for a so, so so and so period of time so we have the data okay and after that different teams will be operating on the data to pro to produce different insights okay so this is uh, this is what the uh, uh, basic areas it's going to be and where data mining is used as i told earlier it's uh, 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 not just these five things each and every application we use each and every uh, device we use or uh, each and every product we buy everywhere data mining is there okay uh, if we are buying a product from a supermarket or a provision store or all those things it is nothing but consumer products right uh some the, the consumer pr products giant like uh, uh, britannia or coca cola they, they'll be doing the analysis on on top of consumers like us right if if it is going to be business to business for example lenovo sells its laptop to uh, uh, employees of cts then it is business to business even there the data gathering and the data mining happens so uh, not just these areas everywhere data mining is happening okay so th there will be two specific uh, uh, scenarios uh, okay uh, uh, that the slide should be this one first okay uh, yeah, okay it's okay i'll i'll go I'll go on from here uh, so th there will be two specific areas the end result of uh, data mining okay the end result of the data mining is going to be the monitoring purpose we have we have we have the raw data that has been cleaned and it has been pushed into a data set and uh, that data set will be used to monitor what is the current position uh, uh, what is the current sales and uh, are we uh, doing the right sales based on the previous month uh, and all those things okay that is monitoring the, the uh, monitoring the current trend and analytics is all about uh, creating some patterns on top of old data and uh predicting the future both comes into this analytics i'll probably give an example uh with this uh, thing so descriptive analytics is nothing but what happened right so it, it's about uh, we'll be having data cleaned up data and uh, a, a team will be sitting together and they'll they'll uh, analyze the data and they'll be telling us what happened for example it's considered that uh sales has uh, gone down or gone up uh, double the time suddenly in november so the business head would be sitting there and uh, he'll be asking the data analyst or uh, data mining team to to find out the behavior why the sales has gone up suddenly two times right because once you find the pattern he might use the pattern somewhere else to boost the sales again right so descriptive analytics is all about what happened and next why did it happen most of uh, th this question would be answered along with uh, what happened itself so uh, why the sales has gone boosted because uh, there was uh, 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 let's say that the, due to some climate change uh, it was heavy rainfall so uh, it, let's consider umbrella is our business and umbrella sales have uh, have gone up uh, uh, to double the uh, double the rate than we expected so why did it happen and based on uh, uh, these things predictive analytics is nothing but creating creating some uh, based on the behavior creating a machine learning model and that machine learning model will uh, predict us what will happen okay so here comes the automation part we, we we have the data and some person is sitting uh, and doing that work why what happened or why did it happen and that machine learning model which has been prepared that that code base itself will be predicting what will happen earlier what uh, a human was doing and here that uh, that uh, software the machine learning uh, uh, app will be predicting that what will happen right and similarly prescriptive analysis how can we make it happen right so let's let's assume that in in next year not in november in october also there will be heavy rainfall that's what the predictive analytics has predicted means 
and this prescriptive analytics is nothing but how can we uh, increase the sales in october also so that's what this uh, uh, this uh, thing about the future plan the even, even that future plan also the the intelligent machine learning platform will be able to provide that's where we are heading towards right so finding out the insight and creating a machine learning model and that machine learning model will be serving us about what will happen in the future so this is what about the, uh, the four types of analytics and now let's see who is actually uh, does this uh, actual role okay so th there are two different roles in the industry one is data engineer and the other side is data analyst or data scientist people who holds these roles are the core users who will be powering up this uh, data mining requirement now let me tell about data engineer this is uh, this role most of the cases the uh, 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 people who are outside the company or people who are uh, outside the engineering uh, uh, sector even the stakeholders might not be knowing uh, well about data, this data engineer role actually data engineer role, role holds a, a major important role and even a demanding job position as well but what is the real scenario is uh, uh, people who are applying for this are not getting prepared before uh, getting joined into a company they get a platform they get to understand about this role only after they join their company and only then they start to train whereas the other side data analyst and uh, data scientist uh, they, they, this is very uh, this role is being polished in such a way that a very demanding position and a very hot position all those things and lot of people are uh, aiming to uh, to apply for, for this role I'm, i i agree with that but the real scenario is without a data engineer a data analyst or data scientist will not be there and based on the current proportion than a data scientist or analyst the data engineer role is very hot and and a demanding portion as well people are not able to get good data engineers whereas a lot of data scientists and data analysts are there sorry data yes yeah, analysts are there so what what is the primary job of data engineer he is the one who sets up the channels to fetch the data from different uh, uh, different uh, uh, what to say uh, different ways streamlines th those uh, uh, incoming data and sets up the pipeline where it will be uh, cleansed and, uh, and uh, beautified and made those unstructured data into semi structured or structured data and he is the one who stores the data into a data store okay so this this is the major, major role of a data engineer uh, e even if you take real example of uh, data mining use cases or something you will see a lot of examples in uh, 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 to be done in python where that uh, that notebook directly starts with a data set that data set will be there and there will be steps to to clear, do some basic cleaning operations and there will be further steps to do some uh, 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 analysis using pandas or keras or something and there will be finally insight right but where did that uh, data come from did we thought uh, through right that data has came because of this data engineer the original data the sample data has came because of this data engineer so ju just if if you are very interested in this role uh, just check out what a data engineer profession is what a data data engineer role is and you will find it really interesting and the, the other side of the role once the data engineer has prepared the data data uh, that comes with a plate of uh, uh, data analyst and data scientist he starts to analyze the data he starts to understand uh, what is the business problem and he'll be pre uh, uh, preparing the insights okay so th th there will be two uh, uh, what to say uh, a simple thing so we are uh, i am constantly mentioning that uh, these two roles data analyst and data scientist right so in a real scenario this descriptive analytics and diagnostic analytics a data analyst will be doing predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics a data scientist will be doing it is not that one cannot do other but a, a, a creamy border that exists between these two roles is what i, I just mentioned here
so if, if you have any questions just uh, let me know i'll i'll take a pause over here So if there is no questions, I can proceed. Okay, one second. I'll come back to this right. Yeah, okay. So the when when the uh, uh, thing, the data mining comes into a real uh, picture in a specific uh, uh, in a specific scenario, this is what will be happening. There will be a, some starting point where it will be involving a lot of wise. Okay, only uh, uh, actually data mining kickstarts only where there is a uh, this uh, why questions kind of thing. Okay, so let, let's consider once again with the layman example itself that mining that uh, uh, mining the land to dig out uh, gold. Right. So why why it would happen? The British government, who have uh, dig up the Kolar Kolar uh, uh, coal field, they may they would have thought that okay, uh, we are uh, uh, we we need to uh, earn something in India, and we should show England that we have earned a lot in India, or we should show our wealth doing in India, and we should uh, give our wealth to uh, uh, to the Queen so that a good good impression would be happening and that triggers okay what, what resources we have and uh, the british government would have identified that okay kolar uh, uh, in the kolar uh, there is a chance of getting uh, 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 gold so there is a gold mine and that's where the things will be happening and, uh, and all those process will be uh, going upon right so similarly in an industry perspective there will be a, a, a sounding question would be there why the sales has dropped down? Why we are not able to compete with the uh, uh, niche products that are being uh, introduced into the market? Why we are losing our deals to other uh, uh, other competitor products and all those things? And that's where the question starts. And they uh, uh, they starts the uh, data acquisition. Okay, while the data acquisition is beginning gathering up the data, th th there will be some other uh, team as well. They'll be preparing the business questions. So, okay, we are losing the deals, but actually where we are losing the deals, whether uh, are we not able to convert those customers who have, uh, who have started using the product as trial and they are not converting to the paid version. Is this a problem or not even people are ready to uh, uh, keep, uh, spend their time to use the trial version of the product itself. Is this the problem? So th th this is the these are the business questions uh, that the, a, a separate team like a product management team or uh, the product team or the business unit team would be discussing and they'll be framing such a kind of questions. Okay, for for the questions being framed, uh, uh, another side. The data acquisition also has begun. So a lot of data uh, would be started to be captured. Okay, but not all this data would be useful. So what happens is based on the business questions, data preparation phase begins. They'll clean the data, they'll transform the data and uh, uh, filter out what are all the data are necessary and they'll chunk out the duplicate data. All those uh, scenarios will be happening. And once that happens, the exploratory data analysis comes into picture. Based on the, again, based on the business question, they'll refine and uh, uh, define the section or the feature variables. Uh, what, what is the actual end goal and what is the insight that is needed? And based on that, just ignore the scan and consider that uh, the data modeling gets started and uh, uh, some sort of cleaned data is being uh, started to create. and uh, uh, some somewhere it it becomes a base for the data analysis an analysis team. Okay, so uh, using those clean data, 
uh, another guy like a business intelligence person would be creating some reports and dashboards and using those reports and dashboards the the business team or the leadership team will be uh, finding out some insights and uh, uh, they'll take over the uh, uh, business decisions all together so once the process starts here it goes on goes on goes on over here and the the platform happens over here okay this becomes a platform and using the same data multiple dashboards are getting created and uh, the business runs all together sometimes if the stakeholders or the leadership team doesn't uh, get satisfied once once again the process starts over here what is the changes need to be done i i uh, the, this is not the answer i have ex expected you need to once again uh, uh, think over the process and uh, bring up some uh, 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 useful data to take some decisions so this is all happens and once there is some 80% or 70% satisfaction with the leadership team uh, the engineering team will uh, 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 make this process fully uh, code based and uh, uh, they'll uh, they'll probably deploy it somewhere and uh, uh, start with the maintenance process so the team which has involved uh, just consider until this uh, during the initial process five or 10 people would have involved and once it went to deployment or maintenance phase just two or three people would be there right unless uh, uh, even those two or three people would be there to do the small small tweaks based on the day day to day uh, goals uh, changes or day to day requirements and once again those data tweaks will be presented to the insights and the leadership will be, team will, will be using so this is what will be happening in the data mining team or data analytics team whatever the term you are okay with it or uh, uh, you, you are able to easily understand with it so now let's consider about uh, data engineers work uh, uh, the it is not just engineer just consider data persons work so there will be an objective and he'll identify the source of data he'll do the data integration he'll store it somewhere and that data will be pre processed and somewhere it will be the visualization starts to happen uh, and once again uh, the loop continues as i was telling right so to dig further let's talk about defining what defining objective is all about it's about understanding the uh, domain or industry and discussing the business need or problem and asking more and more questions and prepare the objectives okay why why defining objectives is a very important phase is the leadership team let's say that it is ceo or the head of sales they would they might be having a clear uh, articulation of problem right okay uh, we need to find out the reasons for the sales uh, that that went down so that would be the general problem statement but they would be having a real picture of uh, how this platform has be can be set up so that uh, the, uh, we can do some uh, analysis and get some insights but the end level engineer or the end data analyst or the data end data engineer might not have that that much uh, clear picture right this would be the real scenario right so he need to understand the domain or industry whether it is a consumer product whether it is a business uh, b2b product or uh, uh, for example let's take that uh, a windmill example itself i was telling about that turbine mill right data engineer might be studied with uh, what is power uh, what is uh, python and all those things he doesn't know anything about the turbine mill so he need to understand that domain okay so okay this is uh, an uh, energy domain and uh, this is a windmill industry so what this industry is about and all those things and he need to understand about the business need and problem as well and he need to ask many questions uh, at the initial stage itself to make sure that he has understood the need properly so and, and he will be preparing the objectives by himself next he, he should be digging up uh, to find out from what where, where are all uh, we can get this uh, uh, get the uh, needed data to solve this business problem okay so in that particular phase he might be uh, they, there might be having some uh, uh, logs that the products generate and there might be some databases where the product data is being generated and he might need to use some rest apis to pull for, pull data uh, from some other system 
and he might even need to use the social media data uh what is the current interest is being going on all those things okay uh even uh, just another example that pops up when the chellikattu protest was happening there was a lot of uh, 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 hindrances towards the soft soft drinks right the coca cola pepsi and all those things just before that uh, that protest everybody most uh, th- th- such a kind of mindset was not a, a big break this uh, the the thing was there the soft drinks was there and in the in some marriage halls or events consumers would be buying there they'll be consuming it and, and everything was going on but suddenly due to some external situation uh, the soft drink sales was uh, uh, getting hit very hard right and uh, and uh, definitely the the respective companies would have uh, jumped in and uh, they, they'll start monitoring it okay w- w- what is the reason why this hype is happening how long this hype would be going on uh, what is the strategy we have to uh, follow once this hype gets over maybe after 6 months or so uh, so that once again let's uh, bring up the interest to people to to make the people to buy all these things an- uh, analysis uh, that company need to be in that case the social media data uh, helps them a lot because uh, the consumers of the soft drinks are ultimate consumer uh, or ultimate public almost all the public are uh, using social media right to share their feelings and expressions to understand the uh, the, the feelings and expressions by a company they'll not be able to go uh, see each and every person what he is what the mindset he is whether he changed his mindset or not those things they need some other way and they use uh, the social media platform okay so till that they'll start mine uh, do the data mining over the social media and they'll see the patterns what is the interest whether the hype has gone down uh, what is the shares uh, that are being done over the uh, about that protest and all those things and they'll decide that okay in in a month or so this uh, hype would go down people would turn normal and they'll go back to business and uh, now let us kick start our uh, advertisement campaign let's uh, bring in some stars or uh, some other person to uh, in in advertisement let's invest a lot and uh, so that we'll g- uh, get back our sales which we had an year back so that's what the strategy would be right so that, that's uh, that, that's a very simple example i guess to uh, mention why social media acts as a main data source for data mining okay and next the, the, from this portion the technical uh, team will get involved in they'll start to gather the data they'll start to clean the data and uh, uh, they'll use a lot of tools uh like uh, apache nifi apache scoop and all those there are a number of tools and uh, they'll do the data integration process to set up the pipeline and do the data cleansing and once that is been done they'll store it to some some place right that data has to be stored properly and securely as well right and that storage happens in different stages uh throughout uh, that pipeline is being set the initial data they need to store somewhere which will be uh, uh, unclean data and during the processing stage it will be semi partial semi clean and during the final stage it will be clean data all these stages the data should be stored somewhere and they they'll, they'll set up all those things and they'll they'll uh, create the setup inst- uh, set up the respective instances whether it is a database or using up a uh, cloud data lake or uh, uh, s- some other thing and all those things and just storing is not enough they need to provide a way so that the data analyst or data scientist can access the data okay so they'll expose the database or uh, data lake in a secure manner via api or uh, via some uh, uh, con- creating some user base they'll expose the data so the data analyst will be able to access the data right so once the data is been ready and ready to access uh now uh, here comes the da- uh, analyst the data analyst team and they'll start the analysis uh create some insights and also they'll also start to prepare the machine learning models uh so that uh, it, it helps them to predict uh, uh, such a hindrance in future ahead itself so that the, the the sales team or the respective team can be ready and all those things happens and finally the visualization so once the data analyst 
can, can have uh, uh, did some initial uh, uh, hypothesis and and the requirement gathering and all those things now the visualization team comes in they'll use tools like microsoft power bi tableau click view they'll create some uh, business dashboards like this where it is easy to understand uh, uh, very quickly and uh, they'll present it to the uh, uh, real decision makers who doesn't have time uh, who uh, or another way who have very short span of time to look into the data and take some decisions okay so this would be the uh, process and once again once the visu uh, visualization is being done uh, it goes back to the uh, from the first step based on the feedbacks the business stakeholders give right so this is the process and let's uh, see about uh, how uh, this can be done the environment where it can be done okay so the, the software or the hardware might reside in on premise or in cloud or there may be a, a hybrid setup as well on premise is nothing but a normal csv file a normal sql uh, sorry excel file which you, you you have in your desktop which you are able to see that file is present in your machine you just open it and click it and are uh, doing all those things right uh, uh, talent kind of tools you can you will be able to install in your machine and uh, do the data integration power bi kind of tool you can install in your machine and do the data analysis whatever you see in your machine all all those are uh, nothing but on premises okay when it comes to cloud still the data resides but you don't know where it is residing it will be uh, stored in some data center either it might be present within 1 km uh, circle of uh, where you are or it may be present uh, uh, in australia or uh, europe you don't know where it is right the data will be there the software will be there sitting somewhere and you have the laptop you just connect to that cloud uh, system you will be using it for whatever you use you will be pay for paying uh, as a rent to them and uh, that's it once you have used and once you have uh, found the value you just uh, 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 go out that's what the cloud analogy is all about right uh, in in very simple example uh, we take a lot of photos in mobile and it will be uh, stored in your phone memory or in the memory card of your phone that is something that uh, on premises and nowadays most of us have started to use google drive extensively and we start slowly started to move our photos to google drive because what we feel as convenient is uh, once i change the phone just uh, entering the google id will be uh, is helping me to fetch all the old photos which i have there is no hindrance of doing the data transfer from old phone to new phone this is what the value we feel right so we are uh, we have started to use the cloud service even an in in person also not a technical person not a, a, a what to say a white collar job person everybody started to use cloud directly or indirectly okay so this is just a, a sample slide why data mining and data analytics is being uh, slowly is being moved towards cloud because you will be able to save a lot of dollars right doing data mining is not an easy job you need to set up that environment you need to hire the respective person you need a clear plan only then doing the data mining might bring you a fruitful result at some point of time okay so in this definitely you need someone who should work on it okay that that is fine but setting up the environment okay if if you have let's consider 3 terabytes of uh, old data and uh, you need some data analyst to kick start with that you need to provide such a uh, costly hardware to that particular engineer to kick start the work right that is a lot of investment because that investment is not sure that whether it will give you profit or not right so when it goes to cloud uh, it's not at all a problem at all because the data the data sits in some cloud and uh, uh, the the engineer would be present to uh, 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 might be present anywhere he just uh, goes on to google 
or Azure or Amazon. He just spins up the resources he need, that is the visual machines he need or the software he need. He'll start to use the data. Uh, he finds some insights, present it to the stakeholder, and that's all. That that uh, the whole uh, infrastructure can be uh, uh, just uh, spit out uh, once that the job is done, right? So that's what it is. Conservative investment. And of course, even as a person, we will be crawling before we walk, right? As a babies, we just crawled first. Once we crawl properly, that baby starts to walk. And once it has started to walk properly, then it starts running. It is not that directly running, right? The same happens in this investment criteria or choosing up a technology as well. So all these stories are how the data, uh, why data mining is being done, uh, where data mining is done. And I also told about two persons, who's the, who does the uh, data mining job as well, right? And this slide is all about a new role that is emerging in the market. Uh, who, who, who does this uh, data mining job? Okay. So earlier, there will be a person called business analyst who knows the uh, uh, about the business, uh, but doesn't know anything technically. And the other side, there will be a person who is very strong in technology, but have very less knowledge about the business and uh, 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 the, the business, uh, uh, the, the consumer ideas and all those things. What happens now is due to the democratization in data mining, there comes a new role called citizen data scientist. Okay. So the, those persons have the knowledge of business have, uh, and have partially uh, some knowledge about the technology like Python or uh, data mining tools and all those things and does a uh, job of both analyst and data scientist, right? So that those people are being called as citizen data scientists, right? Now, let me also tell uh, why such a such a citizen, citizen data scientists are emerging, right? Uh, let me tell you a very simple example. While I was studying in college, whenever there is a, a college function or something, we would be needing a banner, right? Uh, 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 we will be preparing a banner that, okay, this is the event, and these are the chief guests, and uh, uh, these are the uh, plan of the, uh, uh, this is the date the event is going to happen, and uh, uh, all kind of things, right? But now you could see that the college students started to use some tools present online, like Canva, and they'll be able to prepare the banner in a couple of seconds, right? They, they doesn't know the uh, 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 what, what designing is, what Photoshop is, and all those things. They have a tool, easy to use Canva tool. They just create a banner in no time, and uh, that's it, their job is done. That's where this uh, citizen data scientist is all about. The college per, college per student, the current college student, has an uh, idea of what kind of banner he need, what is the data, uh, what is the information that should be present in the banner. And he has a tool called Canva. He don't know Photoshop or something. It's a pure uh, graphic designer would be knowing. He know to use how Canva tool uh, can be used. And using the tool, he creates a banner in no time. So that's what I mean here in the real uh, uh, data industry, a role of a citizen data scientist. Okay, so it's all about do-it-yourself mindset. That's that's the very simple uh, explanation. So, considering the time, what I'll do is uh, I'll quickly show a, a demonstration of uh, ML.NET. How many minutes I have? Five minutes of time. Okay. So uh, uh, I might not be able to explain it very in detail, but uh, I'll give you a quick overview. So I am just opening up uh, an, an IDE, right? So to, to build the .NET application, and I am just choosing up a console application to kickstart, uh, uh, to, to, to show you a machine learning ex uh, example that has been possible to done by a normal developer itself. He need not be a machine learning expert. 
but still he'll be able to create a machine learning uh, model just with few clicks okay so i have landed up into a, a visual studio and now what i need to do is visual studio has provided me an option to add the machine learning model and once i add that as a business analyst or a normal developer who know, uh, doesn't know any machine learning i know the problem statement whether it is a classification or is it a prediction or is it a recommendation or is it a anomaly detection or is it a forecasting all those things so i just have eight tiles and uh, uh, my intention is to do a uh, to create a machine learning model that predicts whether a data is positive or negative okay i'll just quickly show you the uh, raw data as well which i'm going to try in a so this is the raw data that i have and uh, this is the uh, uh, prepared sentiment okay so i already have a data and the sentiment score of the data this is where the uh, data engineers role comes in and the initial uh, data analyst team comes in so before you create a machine learning model you need the clean data and uh, uh, the result as well so what i'm going to do is create a machine learning model that will predict this thing this uh, uh, whether it is a positive statement or negative statement based on uh, the future uh, based, uh, for the future uh, uh, data i am going to give okay so as i showed you earlier uh, i just picked up the scenario it, it is going to be text classification whether it is a positive or negative okay so i just picked up the scenario and i am going to choose my data set and it is showing me the preview so it's asking me that which column you want to predict i want to predict this column right whether it is a positive or negative so i am going to choose the column 1 and the column 0 automatically it gets selected and i just click a button train and i just need to specify the time but for the sample data the 10 seconds is all good so i am starting the training and you could see the uh, uh, logs over here so it is uh, 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 picking up random algorithms and it is detecting the accuracy as well how much accuracy is this and once it is uh, uh, each it will be generating the accuracy percentage for each algorithm since this is a very small data it has stopped with one algorithm itself if not it would have gone to uh two three four five algorithms as well and finally it has decided that okay this algorithm is good and it uh it allows me to evaluate as well okay so i uh, i can give any uh text over here and i can just test whether the model is fine or not yes i see that model is fine and i just click this button code so that's it the machine learning model is has been created automatically i didn't even wrote any code at all and this is the algorithm ml model dot zip is nothing but the algorithm uh, and uh, this is the machine learning project which a data scientist need to create from scratch but due to this ml dot net i have created it within 5 uh, minutes and even i can uh, uh, extend this model further as i as i proceed upon okay that that's the beauty it's not just uh, you create the model and that's it you can also tweak that model in future also based on the further requirements you get and this particular project is uh, uh, been pointed to this machine learning project and even i can uh, set up some sample code instead of this and i can test the sentiment so i have uh, got the predicted uh, value it has told that the sentiment is uh, uh, the, the sentiment score uh, is zero right so it is a, it is a bad comment that's what the model has predicted so that's where the world is moving towards data mining is so deep so wide but 
it is it is getting evolved towards uh, uh, as i told earlier called uh, citizen data scientist right so the future is expecting you to 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 be strong in domain and know the technical side partially so that you can be on the both sides and i'll also uh show you another uh, so few important notes so as i told earlier in data mining multiple processes are there uh, data gathering the data might be present within the company or you might need to fetch the uh, from external source as well like social media and the uh, preparation is nothing but the cleansing the data this is the most important phase and catalog is nothing but making up the data set discoverable right so i, I know you uh, you remember the word catalog even in layman term as well uh, for a marriage function or a birthday function or something the photographer will snap all the uh, take snap of all the photos he'll gather up the photos and he'll arrange it in a catalog and he'll be giving it to us right uh, because we'll be able to see the photo we'll be able to discover what photo we need easily right similarly the data catalog is a process of making the data set discoverable it should be discoverable from any data analyst and data scientist as well and also data governance is there it is nothing but uh, it's not that all the data are available for everything there's there are some governance process you might not uh, be able to use some data you should not be able to use some data even though you have so those kinds of governance process are there in the data mining field and of course understanding the, the problem statement and the domain is very really important and finally uh, it's not that finding out the insights alone is important sharing that insight and uh, communicating that is uh, uh, storytelling that insight effectively is very important right? because your ceo or stakeholders might not be so patient enough to uh, to hear you for 30 minutes they, they might need give you just 5 minutes or so in that 5 minutes you should be able to communicate them uh, you should be able to curate them with the insights you produce so this is all about the end to end cycle of data mining and i guess uh, i have told you the upcoming uh, trends as well in data mining uh, in the data mining industry on the whole yeah and i thank you Well, thank one and all uh, each one of you present over here and the opportunity for the SRM uh, to share my insights about data mining. And I'm open for questions. Uh, thank you, sir. From the participant side, you have any queries? Please ask. Dear participants, do you have any questions? Please kindly ask. Participants, do you have any questions? So kindly post your questions in the chat box, or else you can unmute yourself to ask your questions to some. Participants, do you have any other questions? Also, I think everything is clear for them. Really, thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful presentation. the way you uh, given an explanation with the coding part also even in the short period of time thanks a lot sir for that uh, thank you deepan sir can you hear me yes yes i am able to hear thank, thank you, you so much sir. yeah yeah thank you so much sir for joining us actually the way you presented everything was really great to have you here sir okay, thank you so now i request all the participants to fill the feedback form which has been posted in the chat box Mm -hmm. thanks deepa and uh, can i take a leave yes sir, thank you so much for joining us thank, for giving this wonderful opportunity thank you so thank much you. sir thank you sir
Thank you, Hema, Deepa, and Sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you all. We have come to the end of the session. I would request you all to fill the feedback form, which has been posted in the chat box. On behalf of the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, SRM Institute of Science and Technology, Ramapuram Campus, it's my duty to provide thanks note speech and acknowledge the contribution of those who worked really hard to make this session a great one. I'd like to thank our resource person, Mr. Dinesh Kumar, sir, for joining us in spite of his busy schedule. Thanks a lot, sir. And I thank our management, Dean, HR of Conversations Department, Dr. K. Rajasa, for giving this wonderful opportunity to conduct this webinar program. And I'm glad to thank all our faculty coordinators. Make some special thanks to all our beloved participants, too, who actively participated and made this webinar program a great success. Thank you all once again. Thank you all for joining us for all the five days. Thank you all.